Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Transcending Together podcast. It's me, your host, Alec John Bell, and I am so excited to be doing this first episode. I first want to apologize for the lighting of this video if you're watching the video on YouTube. Um, I tried to wait until the sun was kind of out of my way, but it's still sort of in my way and I don't really know how to record these videos without the sun being in the way because once the sun moves then I won't have good lighting so I kind of have to glow a little bit kind of like Jesus so um (laughs) and people don't come for me I'm not comparing myself to Jesus I it was a joke I I am just really excited to be here. Um, Let me just check to make sure that I'm having no technical difficulties. It seems like my microphone is working, which is great. I've had this microphone for a couple of weeks now. Um, Yeah, so this is the first episode. I, gosh, I can't believe I'm finally here doing this episode. Uh, Let's see. So, I... I'm going to be upfront and honest and say that this is probably going... Things about this podcast are probably going to change over time. Uh, I might change where I'm sitting. I might change the lighting. Hopefully, I can change the lighting. I might change, you know, kind of the way things are set up. But for now, this is kind of how things are going. Um, Sorry, I was just checking my glasses. But... Yeah, it's exciting to be here. So for those of you who don't know, and this is like, obviously, this is your first time checking into the podcast because it's the first episode. But if this is your first time, you know, popping into this YouTube channel, or it's your first time hearing about me, I have a great episode for you today. I'm going to be talking about the podcast, the Transcending Together podcast, kind of talking a little bit about what I want the podcast to be and how I want the podcast to go. I'm going to be talking a little bit about me and my history and how I sort of came to be this place that I'm at as a Christian witch who is hosting this podcast, because I'm sure a lot of you probably have questions. A lot of you probably hear Christian witch and you go, how is that even possible? Well, I'm going to tell you how that's possible. And then, and then we have, uh, then I'm just going to be talking a little bit more about the podcast, uh, overall over the course of the episode. So, um, I'm not entirely sure how long this episode is going to be, but we will see as we go along. So I'm very excited to be recording this episode. Hopefully this table is not shaking the camera and hopefully this microphone is working out just fine. Again, this is the first episode. So if there are any technical difficulties, then we will definitely work through them. So let's start off by talking about the podcast itself. So what is Transcending Together? Transcending Together is a podcast that I wanted to create because I wanted a place, a safe, progressive place where people could talk about spirituality and religion in a a decent way in a in a healthy productive way because i feel like we live in a world where religions divide us and spirituality divides us sometimes spirituality is a little bit different than religion i think i think sometimes spirituality brings people closer together than religion does but religion definitely divides us and sometimes our spirituality divides us as well and i wanted to have a place where we could talk and discuss these difficult topics of religion and just how it makes us separate but i wanted to i wanted to have a place where we could talk about these things and come together and transcend together hence the name of the podcast and just grow as a community. I think it's important for all of us to learn from one another. And I think that even if we all have different religions or different perspectives, I think there's a lot of 
similarities that we all have. And I think we should focus more on our similarities than our differences. So that is a little bit about what the podcast is about and what I hope for going into the future. But I'll get into a little bit more about the podcast at the end of the episode. But let's dive into a little bit of the history of me, your host. So uh, I don't really like talking about myself because I feel like when I talk about myself, I feel like people... I feel like sometimes people think that I like talking about myself in like a narcissistic kind of way, but I really don't. I just like sharing my story because I think my story is really important and I think that it offers a unique perspective when it comes to life. So I guess let's just get right into it. So when I was younger, I grew up in a Christian family. Um, It was... I always loved God. I always loved God. I always loved Jesus. I was very much like, I was, I was the kid that was always praying and always singing along to Jesus, Jesus loves me songs and, you know, just, just enjoying life. And I had a lot of, I was very, I was a very vibrant child and I had a lot of soul to me and that quickly changed when I, um, when I realized that I was gay when I was seven years old, and that was really difficult for me. And it wasn't difficult at first because at first I didn't realize there was a problem. I just had an attraction to other boys and I thought that was natural. I thought that was just what you were supposed to do and, and, or I thought that was something you could do. And I didn't realize that there was anything wrong with that until it started getting ingrained in my head that that was not allowed or that that was not normal or that that was not something that, that could be, um, allowed in God's eyes. So I, when I was nine years old, I came out of the closet officially. And, um, there were some, there was some suspicion, I think, prior to that, but definitely, definitely there was, um, suspicions. Yeah, there were suspicions before that, but but by the time I was nine, uh, everybody knew and, or at least most people knew. And it was really hard. You know, when I was 10 years old, my mother sat me down in in the in their bedroom and she had the Bible out and she was reading one of the Bible verses. I can't remember exactly which one it was. It was one of the ones in the New Testament um, that says the homosexuals will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. And I didn't understand what the word homosexual meant. And I was like, Mommy, what does homosexual mean? And she goes, that's what you are. And, um, when we talk about that story now, we both laugh. My mom is a very big supporter of me now, but what, uh, at the time we just did not, we didn't, uh, we didn't really have a whole lot of a good connection at the time. Um, but yeah, I, uh, sorry, my cat is like, I don't know what he's doing. Hold on. I apologize for having to get up. <laughs> Again, this is this is one of those things where like we're <laughs> I'm going to have to I'm going to have to figure out how to cut that out. Um but yeah, I uh I was I, I didn't really have a very close relationship with my mother and um, and it really kind of it kind of sucked. I loved my mom and I wanted to have that close connection to her, but um, I just I didn't I didn't have a very good connection with my father either and it just it was <laughs> it was really hard. I, I think that being gay just kind of put 
me in a really bad position with my family. Um, but my family did eventually come around and it was around middle school that um, they did they did start to become a little bit more accepting of it. And when I was a child, around the time that I had come out of the closet, I actually got diagnosed with depression, anxiety, and obsessive compulsive disorder because I was having really bad depression and anxiety and OCD as, as stated by my, by my diagnoses. And, um, it was really hard. It was really hard to deal with and really hard to, um, it was a really hard time in my life. And that was unfortunately not the first time and not the only time that I was going to have a difficult time in my life. Uh, but, but yeah, so I got the, the diagnoses when I was a kid and I, I think it's, I think with like diagnosing young kids, like it can be hard because like, I think that, that there's, there's a lot of components that go along with, with diagnosing young children. But with me, it was very clear that something was wrong, that, 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 um, that I had issues. I was suicidal already at the age of 10. And that was, that was just really difficult. But anyway, so my family, my family ended up coming around and, but that was not the, the end of my problems. I was being bullied a lot. I was having issues with other boys in school that I had feelings for. And, you know, being, being kind of the only gay kid, like the token gay kid in school, because I was in South Carolina it was really difficult and I had uh, I had made suicidal threats when I was 10 and then I made another I made an actual attempt on my life when I was 16 and so kind of to skip over some details I got a little bit better, and then when I was 18, I moved across the country to Nevada to live by myself. I wanted to start fresh, have this new perspective, have this life that that I could live for myself. And by this point, my family had already accepted my sexuality. We were in a good place. Like, everything was great. Um... But I just wanted to be away from my family for a lot of different reasons. So I moved to Nevada to live by myself. And my problems did not stop. And in fact, they actually got worse. When I lived out in Nevada, uh, I ended up getting a bipolar 2 diagnosis. And then it was quickly changed to a bipolar 1 diagnosis whenever I had a manic episode for the first time. So that was not fun. Uh, And I don't want to go too much into like all of the details of what was going on at the time, because that's not really what this podcast is for. But I was dealing with a lot of stuff. And that was at 19 that I got the bipolar diagnosis. And then when I was 20, I got a borderline personality disorder diagnosis. Neither of those diagnoses were a surprise. I wasn't shocked. And during this time, I still identified as a Christian in a lot of ways, but I felt like God hated me. And that's a really key thing here because when I went to the hospital at one point in 2017, I just was at this low point and I felt like God hated me. I felt like things were not going to get better. I felt like nothing was going to get better. I felt like I was just at this low, 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 low point. And my, my grandmother actually called me 
And she said, you're going to have like this spiritual experience in this hospital. And I was like, I don't, I was like, grandma, I don't think God loves me anymore. Like, I think God has completely just forgotten about me. I don't know why. I don't know what, why I have been forgotten about, but I don't think God has any, has any love for me anymore. And so a few days later in the hospital, we had a spirituality group and me and this friend that I had made and a few other friends that I had made, we were all in this group together and we all started talking about how we felt like our higher powers hated us. Some people called it God, some people called it something else, but we were all crying, sobbing, like discussing how we felt like, you know, our our higher powers really didn't didn't love us anymore. <clears throat> and we felt like we were at this place that just that we were never going to be able to get out of. And then I distinctly remember, and if you've watched my one of my other YouTube videos that I've made, you'll hear me talking about this experience as well. But in this hospital, in this moment, when we were having this spirituality group, I heard a voice in my head that was not my own. And the voice said, I still love you. And this was as I was crying and thinking that God still hated me and talking about how I thought God still hated me. And I um, I heard it and I was shocked a little bit. Like I didn't understand exactly what I had heard and I was confused and I almost thought maybe I had made it up. But then I heard it a second time a few seconds later, you know, cause the first time I was doubting it, I was like, I don't know. I don't think I just heard that correctly. But then I heard it even clearer the second time. And it said, I still love you. And it was in that moment that I realized that God did still love me. And that I had a purpose still. And it makes me a little bit emotional talking about it sometimes because I was at such a low point in my life and... I just, hearing those words really set me on a path. So I told myself, okay, I'm going to do what God wants me to do, and I'm just going to go with it. So I got out of the hospital. I stayed friends with a couple of the people, but then one of them ended up becoming my, one of my best friends, and um, he's actually my boyfriend now, but um, but yeah, uh we my uh, at the time he was just my he was just my friend and he ended up getting me really into crystals and uh because he had bought me some and um sorry i keep saying um i'm trying to I'm trying to get better at that but he bought me these crystals and i was like okay like i don't know much about crystals but 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 I ended up getting really sucked into it and I ended up really liking it. So I started crystal collecting. And when I ended up moving back to Massachusetts, um, I started building a huge collection. You can see, you can see some of my crystal collection here, but this is only like a small portion of it. I still have more around the, around the apartment, but yeah, he got me into crystals and, I got really into meditation and I love meditation. Meditation is something that's really useful for me and has become a useful tool for me because when I meditate, I listen for God's voice and listen for what God wants me to wants me to hear. And I listen for Jesus and I have conversations with Jesus. Um, I kind of like astral project and go to the tree of life and have these conversations with God and Jesus. Um, uh, during these meditations so meditation is a very useful tool for me and i really love it but then after moving to massachusetts i ended up i ended up falling in love with tarot 
And tarot was something that I never expected that I was going to get into because I always thought it was the devil's thing. And I bought my first Oracle deck, which was Moonology by Yasmin Boland. Uh, And I loved it. And of course, that was an Oracle deck, but still kind of same thing. I ended up, but I ended up buying more decks and more decks and more decks. And now I have close to like 50 decks. It's really bad. But I started falling in love with tarot. And I found that that was a great way for me to communicate with the divine and communicate with God and, and my spirit guides. And I really started to just love it. And uh, so during this time, I created a Facebook group, and this Facebook group at the time was called S A F E, Spiritual as Fuck Every Day, <laughs> was what it stood for. But then I ended up not liking the name, so I changed it to Transcending Together, and that was what prompted me to start my YouTube channel, and. I began my YouTube channel, did an altar tour video, did some random videos here and there, and then I started doing some other videos, and then I realized that I wanted to start a podcast. The reason why it took me so long to start this podcast was because I originally wanted my best friend, who's now my boyfriend, to be my co-host, but he unfortunately is not able to help me co-host at the time, so I am running this podcast by myself, which I hope is okay with people, but I do want to have guests. And that's another thing I wanted to talk about, which is that I do want to have guests, but I want to have guests that are everyday people, people who experience religion and spirituality in their everyday lives. I don't really necessarily want to have like, you know, theologians or, I mean, that'd be cool, but I want to have everyday people on. So anyway, Getting back to the topic at hand, so eventually I ended up deciding that I was a Christian witch, and it was something that took me about two years to explore, but I ended up realizing that witchcraft is actually secular and is not tied to a specific religion, so you can be a Christian witch, an atheist witch, a Wiccan witch, a pagan witch, like you can be a lot of different things. I consider myself to be Christo-pagan, so I have a little bit of Christianity and paganism uh, traditions in what I do and the things that I do in my life, but... But yeah, so I ended up just deciding to be a Christian witch. And that was something that was really difficult for me because I was worried about what other people were going to say and was worried about, I was worried just about a lot of different things. But now I don't care what anybody thinks. And if anybody has an issue with me being a Christian witch, then they can let me know. But I don't really have a problem with it. I think to answer the question that I know that I'm going to get which is that um, how can you be a Christian and a witch um, when the Bible when the Bible what's the word that I'm looking for? (laughs) When the Bible prohibits witchcraft and this kind of goes to a deeper discussion that I would like to have on the podcast one day. And I think it would be cool to have this as like a topic for a a podcast episode, but I don't necessarily view the Bible as like the 100% infallible word of God. So when I read the Bible, I kind of see things as like historical information. I don't necessarily think of it as like ruling, like words that rule over all words that rule over my life every single day. So that's something that is a big piece of that puzzle. And I don't think there's any harm in what I do with my craft. All I do is light magic. I don't do anything dark at all. Not even close. I don't even do anything like I wasn't even doing anything like love spells, like trying to get people to like, I I did a love spell where I was trying to draw in love, but I wasn't trying to make a specific person fall in love with me. Like, I don't believe in doing things like that because I think that that takes away somebody's free will. Um, I just believe that people 
people should have free will and I don't like to do things that take away people's free will. So that's my little tangent about being a Christian witch. But anyway, so enough about me. So why is this podcast important to me? Well, I think it's because I love talking about spirituality and religion. I think it's a great topic. I think it's a fun topic. And I really just enjoy it. Um, Gosh, I got to stop saying, um, uh, I really, I, I, I think that it's a conversation that more people need to be having. I think we all need to be making the choice to have conversations in regards to our religion and our spirituality. And the point of this podcast is not to make everybody a Christian witch. It's not to make everybody a Christian. It's not to make everybody a witch. It's not to make everybody anything. My purpose of this podcast is to take the people that are Christians and witches and pagans and, and Wiccans and Buddhists and Hindus and Jew- Jews and, and, and take all of these people and bring us all together so that we can have conversations about the, th- the things that we love so much. It's not to convert anybody. It's not to change anybody, but it's to have conversations because I believe in leading by example. And I think that if you want to change people's hearts, you need to lead by example And that's why this podcast is really important to me. And I hope that people gain something from this. I hope that people will tune into these episodes and get something out of it because I want to get something out of it too. I want to learn new things. If you guys have ideas for podcast episodes, specific topics that you want me to cover, then I would love to talk about certain things. I would love to discuss certain things. And each episode isn't necessarily going to be about one specific topic. There could be an episode that talks about lots of different topics. Um, Some of the topics that we might cover are the books of the Bible, because I've been reading the New Testament. We might talk about witchcraft and spells. Uh, We might talk about book recommendations, because I've been reading a lot of spirituality and religion books. We might talk about, uh, one of the things that I want to talk about is like Jesus versus Buddha, like what the similarities are, what the differences are between the two of them, because there's a lot of similarities. I read a book about that and it was really awesome. I I would love to talk more about Buddhism and and just all sorts of stuff. Like I have so many ideas that I want to, that I want to do. And, and I just, I'm really excited to share this podcast with, with all of you. I think that it is. It's really something special when you can take people and we can all come together and discuss things that are valuable in our lives. God is a valuable thing to me. My religion, my spirituality is a valuable thing to me. And I hope that I hope that your religion and your spirituality is something valuable to you. And I hope that we can share and discuss these things that are so important to us. And that is the purpose of Transcending Together, the podcast. So thank you for tuning in to the very first episode. I hope you enjoyed this. I know this was a little bit of kind of a rundown on me and who I am. And I know that you know, some of you already know who I am, but might not have known all those details. Um, do you want to see my cat? Here's my kitty. That's my kitty that I had to stop in the middle of the video to go, to go stop and keep him from going inside the cabinets. But anyway, thank you so much for watching this podcast. If you're watching on YouTube or listening, if you're listening anywhere else, I will see you all again real soon. Blessed be. Love you all. See you next time. Bye.